And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, helping because back, back by, back by popular demand in our in our heads, and because and because of the fact that we both have a shared love of bring of bringing martial arts to tabletop in a way that is not just I hit him with my sword for the umpteenth fucking time. To ex to to explore. A few custom ones from some from previous work, and it, and integrating it into the, the MetaHumans Rising system, the one and only T. Dave Silva. How you doing tonight, man? Oh, I'm all right. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, yes, I I, I have a uh, a fondness of of uh, descriptions beyond I hit them, mm -hmm. uh, and and that has uh, influenced uh, both of my uh, publications. Uh, with uh, with Fracture Kingdom and with Metahumans Rising, so I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing the the styles you're bringing forward. Um, last year and and early this year, I actually did a, a series of articles on martial arts, uh, like how to adapt real world martial arts or specific like, styles within a martial art to Metahumans Rising. So let's see if we can apply some of that that philosophy to to what you got for me today. All right. Now, I can't take credit for these entries. This was part of a thread on the old Crafty Games forums years ago, um, exploring how you could utilize the feat system with, within it to, um, to, emu to, emulate some, to emulate some fantastical martial arts. These, are tech these would technically be in the same vein as, vein as a martial art that we know. It's just that the background for these ones is, is completely made up. Um, in fact, in... In Spycraft 2.0, they explored something similar with tackling martial arts and how you'd integrate that into the feat system. It's just that these ones they don't actually exist, but they're they're based they're based on others. So the the approach that I'm going to be going with this is first off the name. I'm probably going to be mispronouncing some of them. Um, where it where it comes where it comes from in narratively, a few key words when it comes to the style. And that, and then going into the description that the style is given. All right. So I I, I do feel that that uh, things like ninjas pair really well with uh, super spies, mm -hmm. and so this coming out of spycraft uh, and, and uh, later iteration seems to make sense. Mm -hmm. So, I'll now I will get I will give a disclaimer at the top. I am most likely going to min going to mispronounce some of the names here. It's just, it's just, it's just, look, I do my best, but I can only do so much. Well, I, I, I will try my best not to butcher names, but I, I know I'm going to be right there with you and we'll do our best together. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you, ha so if, if anybody gets mad at me for my, pro for my pronunciation again, um, please, please send a please comment. Send Please send all of you. Please send all of. Please send all of your hate. Um. Please send all of your hate mail to Randy Pitchford. Okay. Now. Okay. Now they got my. Now they got that joke out of my system. Um. So the first one that I have is, Dagon Ka. Its origin is the Shisha Kingdom, essentially Western China in the early 13th century. The tags, okay. the style tags are aggressive, mobile, and rapid. Description goes: Dagan Ka relies on mobility and jumping. Most successful attacks are performed while jumping and kicking the enemy. It almost never uses grappling techniques or attacks with hands. The style is, as a whole is performed in a flashy and flamboyant manner. Its practitioners commonly start every combat with a leap towards the nearest enemy and then proceed to move in a similar fashion. Okay. So uh, let me lay some groundwork for martial arts in Metahumans Rising. Okay. All right. Uh, they are built in a similar fashion to powers, which is when you take a fighting style, you're going to define its primary role, uh, be it offensive, defensive, 
or uh, like so, some kind of just support. Um, and then you can pick up additional roles for it. Uh, like, let's say you've picked offensive, you, you want to pick defense as well. Now, we start with the base assumption that in a in a martial art, you're going to learn both offense and defense. Mm-hmm. It's just you need to make the decision of which one you're going to focus on. Okay? So if I say it's something that's primarily offensive, it's not to say there's no defense option in there. It's just that you're going to take that later. Okay? With me so far? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right. So what I'm picturing here is you said it's aggressive. Uh, it's very flamboyant. They, they, they jump in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I would typically do is say, um, I would build this around the idea of, uh, someone taking this martial art is going to also want to have things like acrobatics and like, uh, a running talent, mm-hmm. right? Um, I would give them combos, um, which the way a combo works in Metahumans Rising is you perform multiple actions, uh, with, or yeah, you take multiple acts within a single combat action. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you can do up to four of them in, in a single action. The, the more that you, uh, try and attempt at the same time. Uh, I.e., the more you compress into that single action, the bigger the penalty, and you only make a single roll for the action. All right. So even though you're doing like attack, 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 you only roll once, that resolves it. Okay. Uh, with me so far? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So. Like I said, we're we're going to want definitely want to have uh, practitioners of the style take uh, acrobatics. We want them to take uh, movement, running, um, and then for the style itself, uh, what I would do is I would take a specialty for um, or it's an offensive style. Just mm-hmm. first and foremost, it's an offensive style. Okay. Um, I would take a specialty for uh, attacking after I make a movement action, okay? Because I want to get that leap in there. Uh, and I would take a specialty for interrupting attacks, okay? So the way an interrupting attack works is I have a higher initiative than you. So I get to wait to declare my action until you've declared yours, okay? Mm-hmm. So you say I'm and the reason why I do this is for superhero logic, which is guy has a gun to a hostage and pulls the trigger and you as a hero go, no, 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 I'm going to stop him before he can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's a, a, you know, that, that, that is the comic book logic that we're working with here and why initiative goes later in the turn order. It's because you have the option to interrupt somebody else. Making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. So I would give them a specialty for whenever I take a movement action first. And I'd give them a specialty for interrupting actions. Because they they look like they get in there, they strike quickly, and they're going to, to put their opponents down as fast as possible. All right? Now, with that, I would probably also take a couple of combos... Uh, a basic combo would just be like a um, like a lunge, uh, where you the first action is actually movement, the second action is an attack, mm-hmm. and then I would take something like uh, a basic attack attack combo, um, which my first combo then sets me up for. Okay, so I lunge in, I hit you once, right? On my next action, I now have a bonus to hit you because I just moved, and if things uh, break my way, I'm actually stopping you from trying to hit me. And so I get two bonuses now to to uh, lay in on my aggression. So I'm not going to bother to block, right? Like, I can if I need to, but here's where my focus is. I'm just really just 
delivering blow after blow after blow after blow, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then uh, without, you know, since, since we don't have like the level of detail that we might see in, um, you know, like a real one martial art or something like that, uh, I, I might throw in things like uh, like a setup combo, which is like I take a penalty to my attack, so I get a bonus to my next attack. Because I'm I'm always thinking about how am I going to land the next blow, mm-hmm. right? Um, and how am I going to to keep this person down uh, before they can uh, react? Um, other things that you might want to do with it, even though it's it's not in the description, is uh, maybe integrate trip into it, mm-hmm. uh, which like a tripping attack is going to put your opponent on the floor. Uh, and if you're in uh, melee range, you get um, it's easier to hit them. You do a little bit of extra damage. Um, so you might have a uh, a trip attack combo in there also, which works in a similar way. Which is I, I lunge in, right? Then I wait for your attack and I counter with a trip and attack, right? All right. So uh, does that does that feel right to you? Yeah. Um. Now, the next one I have is Flow of a Hundred Streams, um, which it states as its origin, a sub-style of Tai Chi. The tags are defensive, rapid, and stationary. The Hundred Streams style is a defensive style that focuses, that concentrates on attacking pressure points and using stationary defensive techniques. Calm and serene, the practitioners of the style wait um, almost immobile until the enemy attacks them, then they unleash a barrage of strikes aimed at the vital points. It is uncommon to see a hundred streams warrior attacking someone or charging during combat. They prefer to wait until the enemies make the mistake of attacking them. Okay. So, um, uh, <laughs> I actually covered Tai Chi in the uh, the martial arts series. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just... I'm going to go off the top of my head, but I, I will definitely say you should look this up uh, in the series uh, because I, I think this is going to, to pair really well with what I'm about to say. Um, so another type of combo. All right. So first of all, this is this is primarily a defensive style. Okay. Like you have striking in there. We do have offense, but we're going to focus on defense first. Okay. Now, uh, we've already established that you can move an attack in a combo. I'm also going to state that you can take an active defense and attack in a combo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, With that, there is also a combat maneuver called Power Strike. And Power Strike can represent a number of different types of attacks. Okay. This can be your wild, wind-up, Western-style haymaker. Um. or this can be your uh, a Timmy strike where you just hit a nerve cluster and it doesn't matter how tough they are, it just goes straight through their armor. Um, the, the important thing is it is difficult to pull off a power strike, okay? Mm-hmm. But it is um, armor penetrating. So it has the possibility of I may be just a, a martial artist, but I can now fight a super powerful um, individual because even though they have this impervious armor, I go straight through it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, for this character uh, or for this style, I, I'm going to be looking at, um, uh, again, I'm going to... Uh, uh, focus on on my power strike as a specialty, right? Because mm-hmm. I definitely I, I want bonuses to use power strike because I want to get that in as often as I can. Okay. Uh, I might also take a specialty for staggering, which is um, I hit you not really to do damage, but to to uh, uh, knock you knock you silly, right? Which then sets me up to do other attacks. Okay. Now I realize I'm talking a lot about striking. Uh, and the reason why is because I'm going to pair all of this with a counter strike, right? So my combos are going to be like block to power strike or block to stagger, okay? Um, and then I might take a, a follow up kind of combo, 
Um, but at that point, um, really, you're you're just looking at, at cleaning things up um, because you you've done something to either incapacitate them with a staggering strike, or you've hit them in a way that their armor doesn't really apply. Okay, so this uh, this gives you the flexibility to take the fight where you want from that point. Uh, but I'm not. Am I am I missing something from the martial art, or, or are are we hitting on the 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 core elements here? I'd say I'd say we're I'd say we're hitting on I'd say we're hitting on what's what's um vital to it. Yeah, uh, I just I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that that's that's probably how I would take it. And and again, you can reference the the actual Tai Chi entry, uh, which which has a lot more detail, um. So the next one is also a also meant to be a Tai Chi um, substyle called Wings of the Phoenix, um, and this one the tags are offensive, mobile, and fluid. This style uses no leg techniques, instead rely relying on attacking the enemy with arms. It combines quick strikes with complicated movement patterns. Graceful and confident, most Wings initiates move around the battlefield, performing fluid strikes with their arms. Rarely staying in one place, they prefer to attack many opponents at once, never concentrating on one. Also common among them are wide-sleeved jackets that that accentuate their preferred striking methods. All right, so th this is a fun change. Um, so uh, here we're going to take some of the episode, uh, elements from the first one, where we definitely want to have some movement kind of talents involved, right? We want we want that mobility for this character. Uh, the the other thing that we want here is the ability to take on multiple opponents at once. So you can take uh, specialties for just that. I'm fighting two people, or you know, well, um, in Meta Humans Rising, when when you get to larger numbers, we actually abstract it. Instead of me as the GM having to roll for 15 guys, uh, I just say, no, that, that's a typical mob. And I take the stat for the, the base MOOC and I, I give them bonuses, right? Um, and that way, as a GM, I only have to roll once, and you as a player only have to deal with one stat block instead of everything involved in rolling 15 times, right? Um, and so... You can take a specialty for fighting mobs. Uh, mob being the definition of of when we have to group uh, background characters into uh, this category. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would take very similar combos, but not the exact same, because you're looking at things like attack, move, attack. Right? You don't necessarily lunge in, because it sounds like they come at you and then you move through the crowd to take down as many as you want, right? Um, but yeah, I, I would do, like, you, you could still take that same lunge from the first uh, martial art, and then I would probably take something like, uh, like something to just find that I'm, I'm passing through the crowd, which would be like an attack, move, attack. Um, and uh, again, I'd take a specialty in, in fighting large numbers, right? Um, if I wanted to make sure that they don't necessarily just instantly get up and hit me again, I I might focus on either staggering, which pairs back to, you know, it's a derivative of Tai Chi, and so we're doing these kind of pressure strikes. Mm -hmm. So instead of it just being attack, move, attack, it'd be like staggering, strike, uh, uh, move, staggering, strike. Right, and you can take especially for staggering to kind of offset the difficulty there. All right, um, it's definitely. It, I'd say Wings of the Phoenix is definitely the kind of style you would see that um, you that would fit in a lot a lot more naturally in in the in the fight scenes of a lot of the um, a lot of the martial arts movies that we that we both grew up on. You know where you've got a, where you've got a whole lot where you've got a whole lot of mobs and just and just bouncing strikes back and forth. I would bring up the Rise to Honor game on the PS2, but 
not enough people have played that, so that's going to go over people's heads. I mean, uh, unless you want to talk about Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. <laughs> no, I'd rather... Let's not and say we did. <laughs> I'm not drunk enough that. Was for a that cinematic classic. <laughs> okay, now I know you're fucking with me. Um, right, how about this? I like the movie. <laughs> I, I like the I like the movie. I'm not I'm not sh I'd um I'd say it's I'd say it's a good it's a good movie to riff on. I'll put it that way. That may be that may be because that may be my Minnesotan showing because well, MST3K is um where is it comes comes from my neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, but see, I'm from New York. Uh, for a brief period of time, I went to school in Harlem. <laughs> so that. That movie is from Monday of the Woods. <laughs> I I can I can get that, which also might make you the most polite New Yorker I've had on the show. I'm out of practice. <laughs> I, I live in California now. Um, look, all, all I'm saying is that there there was a um there I want at one point there was a um. There was a li there was a list made of the 100 rudest cities in America. New York City got the number one spot. As well, we should and, and take it with pride. And the and New York rudeness is has been a thing since before America was America. So, um, and but but next we have um owl style combat. Who's trace, which traces its origin to the Aztec Empire, uh, as well as what's referred to as the Owl Knights Military Order, which um, I might I might have somebody commission what an Owl Knight would look like. That'd be interesting. In the same, I mean, that's the, a cool name. In the same, like I I did I did hold I did hold classes and the like over the um, over the je, over the um, Eagle and Jaguar warriors from from Aztec. Um. But the so the tags for the style are close, brutal, and aggressive. Created to kill, this style tries to deal as much damage to an enemy as possible. Its practitioners are ruthless and brutal killing machines without any hint of human emotion. While attacking, they always try to needlessly hurt their enemies before killing them. During combat, they concentrate on one enemy and fight with him until they are sure he is dead. They then choose another victim. Also characteristic is their fondness of feather decorations and jewelry. All right, so let me uh, let let me start by saying um, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me for uh, for talking about something else for just a second. Um, Go ahead. I, I actually wrote an article for Accessible Games Quarterly that featured a immortal Aztec warrior. Um. Uh, who uh, who who still had their their sword from centuries prior? Um, so I uh, th this one's kind of uh, near and dear to me. Um, but uh, uh, so so I, I've actually been working on like Aztec uh, fighting style concepts. Um, but let let me focus on this this uh, owl warrior that they have described here. Um, so. We want to be up close. We want to be brutal. Um, the 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 way to do that is heavy blow. Okay, heavy blow is I I trade accuracy. I get damage. Okay, and I can do this almost as much as I want up to a point. Um, that that point being like your attack modifier can't drop into the negatives. Um, but uh if you if you wanted to have this this brutal style that is the way to go right that is i hit for as much damage as possible uh every time i hit now the the way the author here describes it is there's also this element of cruelty um and so what I might also want to do a specialty in is crippling blow. And 
what that does is uh like staggering strike trades damage to to put you out of commission for a few actions or a few turns what crippling blow does is allows you to trade damage to apply a injury to the character um uh such as uh dazed or broken mm -hmm. um and and these are these are our heavy penalties that have to be healed to recover from. Uh, so uh, broken is you 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 pick a a part of the body, and if something you are are doing requires that part of the body, you take a penalty. Um, dazed is uh, you are foggy headed until you can heal, and you are going to take one less action. Uh, and so that that would be a real way to uh, bring the pain, mm -hmm. as it were, uh, in the fight. Um, what I I might do because crippling strikes are very hard to get off, um, is also give them. So we're we're getting to a lot of specialties here, right? And uh, and you can do this, especially with like a classic superhero character. But if we're looking at more like a pulp era character or a uh, a low powered hero, you might really only have the points for for one or two maneuver specialties if you want to get other things in the build, mm -hmm. right? So the question is, what do we want to prioritize? Um, do we want to prioritize cruelty? Do we want to pro prioritize brutality? I would say brutality. Yeah. So, uh, and the reason why I bring that up is because the other thing you might want to add is either stagger or trip, mm -hmm. um, because that's going to set you up to deliver those crippling strikes or the heavy blow, right? Um, and so what, what I might do is I might say, all right, if I'm developing this style, I might start with heavy blow. That's my first specialty. Okay. Uh, I'll take a uh, combo that's like assault with it's just heavy blow, heavy blow, right? I'm just I'm laying in on attacks. Uh, as I develop the character, uh, I'll take a a second specialty for I'm gonna say staggering because it doesn't say that they like to put people on the ground; they just like to be mean, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so I'm, I'm dazing you lightly in combat. Um, that's it's going to do less damage it's going to prolong the battle but it's also going to set me up for heavy blows okay mm -hmm. and then uh as i develop the character then i might get into that crippling strike where it's like okay now i'm like okay break the arm break the leg right apply concussion um and that might be the order that i progress my specialties in and then Again, as far as like combos, I would be applying things like uh, double heavy blows or like a, a heavy blow to a setup so I can get into uh, something that's even and more ferocious on the next attack or uh, a stagger to a setup. Uh, again, just like I'm going to daze you, I'm going to hit you lightly, and then on my next action, then I'm really going to pound you, mm -hmm. right? So that, that might be how I do that. Um, uh, does that does that seem to jive with uh, what you were thinking? Yeah. All right. Um, so I, I want to take a step back because uh, I, I want to talk about the name for just a moment because we called it uh, Owl Warriors. Yeah. And when I think about that, um, we have another maneuver called Bypass Arm, mm -hmm. okay, which is instead of just taking an action to attack you, I study my opponent I find their weaknesses, and then I'm going to exploit those weaknesses. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I was, if I was more focused on, say, how an owl, how how you might perceive an owl for combat, I might do a specialty in bypass armor and heavy blow, right? And so instead of I'm just attacking all the time, it's 
I get my timing, I identify where you're weak, and then I exploit that weakness. And so I take specialties for bypass armor, I take specialties for heavy blow, and I would take a specialty for attacks following bypass armor. So I've seen your weak spots, I'm exploiting those weaknesses. Right, and so that'd be another way, just working off of the name, how I might want to do that. So next is quote unquote street fighting. Origin uh -huh. New Origin New York twentieth century. Um, tags are close, brutal, and deceptive. A dirty fighting style created on the streets. It incorporates the use of improvised weapons into an array of other techniques. To say that a typical street fighter does not exist is an understatement. No single list of techniques and typical movements exists for this style. His practitioners usually use deception, like carrying concealed weapons, and use dirty tricks to confuse their enemies. During most fights, they first try to get a weapon into their hands, be it a pipe, chain, or something similar. After that, it's up to them how they fight. All right, so let's talk about talents first. <laughs> um, so for talents here, a uh, few things I'm going to want to take. Uh, stealth. I'm going to want to take uh, subterfuge. I'm going to want to take um, scrounging. Lots of S words in their skills, in their talents. Um, and, and the reason is if I have stealth, I can actually like hide in combat. Okay? So I can, I can move in a way where you lose track of where I am, and I set myself up to hit you against your surprise defenses of your normal defense. Right. Uh, subterfuge uh, means I'm good at doing sneaky attacks, and I get a bonus of damage when I do that. Uh, and then scrounging uh, gives me a bonus when I have an improvised weapon. Um, oh, one more S word: serendipity. Mm -hmm. So, in in Metahumans Rising, uh, players are able to edit and add to scenes based on the the established uh narrative okay um the the uh i may have used this example in a previous episode but i'm, I'm going to say it again for anyone who hasn't watched it let's say that you're on top of a tower that has been taken hostage by a group of people that are perceived as terrorists and the entire roof of the tower is um uh set to explode with c4 there's no real way down the stairs because there's terrorists waiting to shoot you. Um, and so the player then says, well, is there a fire hose on the roof? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't actually describe that as the GM, but it makes sense, right? So serendipity is a, a means of injecting these kind of concepts. Uh, if you're in an alleyway, it's saying uh, there's a fire escape. Um or there is a, a large trash bin that is mostly empty. Uh, it is saying that if you're in the woods, there is a, a um, there is a large stone or a, a, a burned down cabin, things like that. Right? I, I didn't necessarily describe it, but these are things that logically kind of fit in there, and, and we can make it work. Right? The the less logical it is, the the less likely it is to be there, and that's where the role gets involved. Right. But, again, just going off of the street fighting style, these guys always want to have some kind of improvised weapon. So we're going to add in serendipity so that they can always get that scrounging bonus because they picked up a pipe wrench, trash can lid, or, or whatever they might have found. A uh, piece of broken glass, brick, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So now that we have that stated, okay, um, we want to uh we want to be able to to get in uh and i i know it said that you can fight however you want but also described as being rather brutal okay mm -hmm. so we're going to give them a specialty for impro improvised weapons and we're going to give them a specialty for uh attacks versus surprise defense okay and then let's give them two combos mm -hmm. uh one of which is attack and and fall back to self okay 
because we can we can pair a skill roll or a talent roll with our combo. All right, it doesn't have to just be attacks, as long as there's a logical flow to it. Um, and then we also want to give them a uh, a um, active defense to stealth. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's always like I need to make sure you don't know where I am. And then I'm going to hit you with a pipe in the back of your head. And that is going to hurt a lot. Um, other things that you might want to add, uh, there is a boon called Critical Skill, which says if I roll uh, two sixes on an attack, I can give up the bonus of rolling those sixes to automatically trigger the effect of this skill. Okay, so let's say I'm not using one of my combos. I just attack you when I roll really well. Mm-hmm. I can automatically treat that as a stealth roll and disappear. All right. <clears throat> so does that does that feel right to what they were describing? Yeah. So next is Fangs of the Zmei, origin in the Sla- in the Slavic regions, po- time unknown, possibly seventh or eighth century. Tags are rapid, mobile, and deceptive. A strange style that f- relies on mobility and an almost supernatural bad luck following the enemies of its practitioners. Sleek and cunning, the fangs are devious opponents on the battlefield. They always try to be on the move, twisting and rolling into different directions. They strike only when they see that their, their opponent is weak or exhausted. Most of them openly insult their enemies to force them into making a mistake. Okay. So let's talk about two different talents first. Uh, one is provoke, mm-hmm. and provoke is I'm going to say things to make you attack me. Okay. Uh, and you're actually going to get my provoke as a bonus to hit me. But if you want to try and attack anybody else, you're going to take that as a penalty. All right. Uh, and you can define provoke however you want. Like I, I've seen it defined as insulting comments. I've seen it defined as like a demonic appearance. There's 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 any any way that fits the narrative for your character. Uh, the other talent is intimidation. And what intimidation lets you do is essentially make your opponent cower. All right you do something to intimidate them and they're going to take a penalty to all of their roles. Um, for so many turns, depending on how uh, high your intimidation talent is. Okay. Mm-hmm. So both of these can apply to the, I'm insulting my target. It's just, what is my goal? Is my goal just to make them worse? Is my goal to protect my allies? Right? And you can actually do both at the same time. Right? So if, I, if I've if i intimidated you and I provoked you, right, you can attack me, you'll get that provoke bonus, but you're also going to get the intimidation penalty. But if you attack my allies, you'll get the intimidation penalty and the provoke penalty. Okay? So I, I think, like, these talents might be really good fits for this build. And you can you can critical skill the intimidation so that you're proccing that every time you uh, uh, get a good hit in if you want to, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, then the uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take movement uh, because we we said that it's um, it's mobile, and so we, we're going to definitely want to be able to reflect that in uh, taking some mobility based combos. Um, and so what I'm thinking here is maybe something along, along the lines of not just move and attack, but move, attack, and move. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I close ranks with you. I hit you. I back off. Right. And you now have to spend an action to close ranks with me. Um, Whereas I can keep doing this and keeping you at bay. And the other thing I would run, like, I'd probably take three combos around this, like a move, attack, move, a move and attack, and an attack and move, Mm -hmm. right? So if you close ranks with me, I'm just going to hit you back off, 
All right, close racks again. I hit you. I back off, and I'm going to keep you, um, keep you moving for as long as I want. Right. And if I pair that with a critical skill for intimidation, I'm also going to demoralize you while I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. All right. Does it this? Am I am I hitting everything here? Or am I missing anything? I'd say I'd say I'd say that's definitely on the mark. Okay. Um, so the next one I have is simply called Doe. Um, only has two tags, that being fluid and neutral. The Doe is the oldest existing martial arts style, almost forgotten, uses very basic and easy techniques. The most common thing shared by its practitioners is their enormous personality and inner strength that emanates from them. Although they use basic techniques, most of them look complicated and difficult to perform. While fighting, they try to fight themselves through the enemy lines, sometimes to the point of ignoring others. It should be noted that this style is so rare that finding its teacher is almost impossible. Okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, huh. I, I want to make mage jokes because I was actually a, a martial art from Mage the Ascension also. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it is simple techniques that look complex. Uh, but I didn't get anything about it confusing its opponents or anything like that. Um, and so we really have what I'm, I'm reading sounds like a blank slate, right? Um, and so I like I, I don't want to cop out on this one, um, but there, there's really like you can take this in any direction you want. Uh, you know, you start with your basics, which is I I, uh, I I have my defensive style or offensive style. I take a secondary role. I take full role so that it's uh, completely paired off. It's it's neither better at offense or better at defense, right? So it's balanced in that way, mm -hmm. right? Um, I might take something along the lines of. Um, uh, maybe uh, the religion talent and then something like uh, religion supports my offense or religion supports my defense. And then I might take concentration and take that as the, the counterpoint to it. Right. So my, my, um, my concentration supports my offense. If my, my religion supports my defense. Okay. So we have kind of the, the philosophical aspects of it as well. Right. Like, the philosophy of Doe makes me a better Doe practitioner. Um, and when we get into when we get into combos and other specialties, this is where things start feeling a lot more open ended. Because um, and and please correct me if I I miss something here, mm -hmm. but it is. If you understand Doe, I can become good at any one of these things. Doe does not uh, favor one one style of um, attack over another. Yeah, the key, the key thing is, um, I'd say the key thing with this sort of th with this approach is force of personality. Okay, so the question is, how do we want to translate force of personality to a, a combat style, right? And one thought might be um, let, let's, uh, I'm going to have to uh, take a second, because I, I want to make sure I get this right, but I have an idea here. So, here's what I might do. Um... There is a talent uh, called Beauty slash Handsome, okay? But we give you the ability to reflavor talents. 
uh, I might reflavor this to be specifically called force of personality. And the example given here, uh, or the, the advantage here is uh, you, once per session, you can use your power as either meddling, or you can use your, your uh, appearance either to meddle with somebody or as a control power, um, but it has to be based on the narrative. Okay. Now, with that in mind, we flavor this to force of personality. Okay. That's not an issue. Um, you, are, you are simply someone who commands the room when you enter. You may not be that attractive, but you know all eyes are on you, and it affects first impression. So me mechanically, it it works exactly the same way, okay. Uh, but what it does allow you to do is, if you're facing an opponent, you activate that advantage. You use it to control them, right? Make them not want to attack. And uh, I'm going to have you read the book Zen in the Ar Zen in the Martial Arts. I have. I cannot say I have. Okay, so it's a short book, uh, by Joe Hayes Haynes Haynes, um, and he tells a story in it about um, one of Gichin Funagoshi's uh, mentors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Funagoshi being the the guy who founded Shotokan Karate. Um, but uh, his mentor, or one of his mentors, uh, was uh, renowned martial artist uh, in, in his, his time, right? Mm -hmm. And he, he had gone to the market, and uh, I think it was like a fishmonger or a merchant who was there, right? Some, someone who was there selling goods recognizes him as this martial artist, and in martial art movie style challenges this guy to a duel uh although this is supposedly a, a true story right? challenges him to a duel to prove that his style is superior and he says okay uh i want you to meet me at this location tomorrow at dawn okay uh that way they both have time to prepare all that good stuff mm -hmm. next day uh the guy shows up and he says uh, do you still want to fight? He's like, yes, I have to prove that my style is superior. Right? Let's fight. And he just looks at the guy. And the guy stands there. And he can't move. And he can't move. And he can't move. And eventually he he uh, he sits down and he starts to cry. Um, and again, uh, please keep in mind, I, I am recounting the story from years ago. Right. I have not read this book anytime recently. This is just something that stuck with me. I highly advise picking up the book. It's like five bucks. Um, and he's like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I wanted to attack you, and I just I couldn't do it. And Funagoshi's uh, mentor says, um, uh, when two tigers fight, uh, one will surely die, but the other one will be wounded. Uh, all I did was make you see that. And uh, that's how I see this force of personality being used as a control power in a fight, right? So, again, we're, we're just reflavoring beauty mm -hmm. um, to be force of personality, but this is absolutely how you could use that advantage, is um, I'm controlling my opponent to take away their will to fight me. Thoughts? I'd say I'd say that I'd say that would certainly work, which especially since because of how because of how broad something like this is, you could literally take it take it any number of ways. Yeah. Now, if you want, you like you can actually turn this into like a super martial art and actually take like a control power or however you want to do that. Mm -hmm. But I I'm trying to build this in a way that these are are um, they're not actually powers or martial arts. So I'm, I'm trying to focus more on talents and. Then dig into the the actual powers and stuff. Like I, I want to focus on combos and specialties mm -hmm. uh, and talents. So like there, there's uh, there's definitively other ways to do this in the system, but this is how I would do it um, to keep it kind of grounded in like a cinematic reality. Yeah. So 
Next is um, Long Fu, whose origin is in the Kunlun Mountains in, Chi in China. The um, tags are fluid, precise, and defensive. Um, it says, a style created to recreate the hypnotizing movements of the Chinese Lung Dragons. It concentrates on simple attacks and precise hits. While quite esoteric, the style is, effect is an effective art which combines point strikes with evasive movements. Attacks are often made with fingers combined into three parts that are held together. Thumb, index, thumb, index and middle, ring, and pinky. Movements use circular patterns that are combined with swaying movements of the torso. Additionally, users are fond of certain acupressure techniques, some of which are very damaging to the body. Okay. So, uh, th this sounds like it's primarily a defensive style. Um, he said his tags were fluidity. Fluid, precise, and defensive. Precise and defensive. Okay. So, yeah. We're going to start with the defensive style. Again, that doesn't mean you don't take secondary role for offense. It's just that we're going to take defense first. Okay. Uh, we are going to focus on our counter-strike combos, which means we take an active defense before we attack. Um, because we want that precision in there, we're going to take setup as a specialty, which is, again, I, I take a um, I hit to the accuracy with my setup attack, but my follow-up action actually gets a bonus because I set it up. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and then... Uh, to represent that the uh, pressure point strikes, we take the uh, the power strike uh, maneuver as a specialty, and we can integrate that into our combos. Uh, we we are we are fluid here, so I'm picturing something again like uh, active defense, uh, and then power strike, and then movement. Or active defense and setup, or uh, power strike and movement. So it depends on where I am in the fight. Okay. Uh, so they attack me, I defend, and if I think I can, I'm going to go ahead and just power strike them then with my pressure point technique. Bow. Uh, if I think they're a little bit more skilled, I'm going to take my active defense. I'm then going to set them up instead of doing the, the power strike now, and then I get opponents to my next action, which is going to be that power strike and move to disengage. Mm -hmm. uh, does that does that get everything, or, or is yeah, there something I'm... Yeah, I'd say so. Um, okay. So the next is Waraku Boxing. Um, its origin is in Brazil, and it's a relative to Capoeira. The, st the tags are fluid, mobile, and defensive. A simple combat style relies on straightforward movements and foot techniques like kicks and sweeps. Created by a branch of the Brazilian army, this style is a evolution of the capoeira. It lacks the fluidity of the base style, but adds an edge to every attack. It uses straight kicks, a handful of standard boxing moves, and a huge amount of evasive slash balance techniques. Its users are trained to move through treetops in the jungle and learned how to effectively fall the hard way. Other than that, it's easy to spot a practitioner. He always wears a Brazilian military uniform. Okay. So, uh, again, if you want, uh, Capoeira is, is one of the styles that we covered in the martial arts series. But this actually sounds radically different. Um <laughs> uh, as far as talents go, we are we are definitely going to uh, load up on our acrobatics. We're going to take some climbing. We're going to take some movement, okay? Because we, we want those, like, uh, ability to climb and scale trees. We want to make sure that we don't fall down when we're running across branches. We want to make sure that we have some extended jumping abilities so that we can jump from treetop to treetop uh, all in a just style, mm -hmm. okay? Um uh, Uh, as far as the striking goes, um, this is, uh, there, there's less, it sounds like there's much less deceptive nature in, in the, the way you move in a fight, uh, because they, they said straight kicks, 
and boxing techniques. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, here I might go back to our friend Heavy Blow. Um, and as a as a nod to uh, uh, Capoeira, uh, what I what I might do is I, I might mix it up with like a, like a, an active defense to heavy blow combo, a um, an attack and setup combo, and then a a double heavy blow combo. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we get some of the 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 uh, the original kind of uh, defensive nature. Uh, you don't know where I'm coming from, kind of. Uh, well, it's I, I defend and then and retort, but we we focus more on setting up and delivering hard attacks. Mm -hmm. um, was there was there anything else you think we should add there, or that's missing? The, I'd say I'd say that um co that covers everything. Um, so the, the next one that I have is SWAT close combat training. Origin is international style. It, the tags are non-lethal, defensive, and close. Developed as a set of subdual techniques useful in close quarters police actions. This style can't be identified until it's used. Most practitioners act in a standard police manner. When it is used, it limits itself to chokeholds and submission techniques to knock opponents unconscious. Most users do not consider this a true martial art. For them, it's an easy way to get the criminal down without true harm done to anybody. Okay. So here we're going to we're, we're going to take some specialties uh, in trip, right? Because we want we want to take them down fast, right? Uh, that's going to put someone on their back. We're also going to take specialties in grappling, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and as far as combos go, uh, we're going to be looking at things like a uh, a grapple to trip, which is just like I I put you in some kind of hold, I take you to the ground, okay? Uh, an active defense to grappling, which is uh, no, you don't hit me, but I'm going to take that arm, and I'm going to use that to put you into a hold. Uh, and then uh, if uh, if we have the uh, the focus for, like, if we want to really devote ourselves, we definitely want to put some points into staggering, uh, so that uh, when I do make an attack, I'm probably going to make a staggering attack, uh, and that way I don't do a lot of damage, but I knock you silly, and that sets me up to grapple you and, and pin you and, you know, handcuff you. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so that, I think that covers that one. So next is Irish, quote-unquote, boxing. Um, origin, East Coast of the East Coast, U.S., 19th century. Tags are aggressive, close, and stationary. Developed among brawlers, this simple and violent style has been named Irish because of its many champions hailing from Erie. It this style is considered the style is considered vulgar and not a single school of it exists. Students learn of it through skilled practitioners met in bars and pubs. The style itself concentrates on taking and dealing damage. It incorporates few movements and is rather known for its stationary combat. The techniques are simple. Every single one weakens the opponent in a certain way, from uppercuts aimed for the jaw to punches aimed for the solar plexus. Okay. So, let's talk about boons for a second. Uh, I know I mentioned a few earlier, which is like uh, um, critical skill and uh, supports, but uh, there's also one called extra stamina. And if you're standing in place, you, you probably want some extra stamina to get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. uh, so let, let's just establish as a baseline. These guys can take a hit. We agree there? Mm -hmm. All right. So um, now every attack is meant to do something. Well, that that's true. Like there's no attack not meant to do something. <laughs> um but we have this uh, this kind of broad broad palette um, because this is hub brawling. Um, 
I, I might take uh, some scrounging just because I want to pick up a bottle and bash you on the head, even though the martial art doesn't actually describe that. Um, I'm probably going to focus on heavy blows because I want to hit hard. Um, and then the other thing is I probably focus on interrupting actions. Okay. So the, the interrupting action, like I might have a heavy blow to heavy blow, but uh, as a combo, but I'm going to wait for you to attack me. But before your blow lands, I'm going to punch you in the face. Uh, I'm willing to risk getting hit myself. That's where that extra stamina comes in. Um, but I'm, I'm really good at people swinging at me and making them pay for that. All right, I can get. I can certainly get that. Um, so the next, the next one that I have is Way of the Traveler. Its origin is Bhutan, possibly late tenth century. A style developed for defense among Bhutanese monks. It uses a strange combination of staff and foot techniques. The staff techniques are used for defensive purposes, like driving away flanking opponents or pinning dangerous ones down. Foot techniques are used to attack opponents. While being a rather defensive style, those moves are more than equal to those used for kick by kickboxing pros or taekwondo masters. Most users start every combat with twirling their staves around. This not only distracts the enemy, but allows them to quickly block attacks. One of the most amazing moves used by this style includes a twirling staff in one hand and the second, in, the second on the ground, stabilizing the user as he sweeps the enemy down with... It with both his legs. Okay. So, uh, one, uh, let me qualify a couple things. We've talked about a lot of um, uh, unarmed styles. Uh, integrating a weapon in Metahuman's Rising is simply uh, as if I was saying, does this style use this kind of weapon? If yes, then you go ahead and just add everything together. It's fine. Okay. So you'll take your staff as gear, because clearly you actually have a staff on with you at all times, okay? Uh, and that would just add into things. Um, there is an example for a bow staff in the in the Medium Rising Core book, um, but stylistically, I might actually build this more like a uh, Bart Jitsu, mm -hmm. uh, which is another one that we covered in the Medium Rising uh, or uh, in the the martial arts series uh, on the website. Um uh <laughs> Bart Jitsu being a, an Englishman named Bart who made a martial art. Um but uh the um the style actually focused on integrating in an umbrella. Um which I, I always thought was interesting. But here we're gonna take some of the principles, which is the umbrella gives you uh added reach. Uh, and, and allows you to keep away from your foes. Um, I'm picturing, based on the description, uh, our, our maneuver focus is probably going to be on, um, on uh, uh, trip attacks. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably take combos that are things like an active defense, uh, attack, and move. So I, I defend your attack, I put you on the ground, I back away. Um, and then uh, there, there is nothing uh, preventing you from having combos that address multiple people. We actually have a few examples through the, the martial arts series, um, which is, and if I wanted to, so I have this three move combo I can have a four move combo that's the exact same thing that has an attack on the back end for a second opponent. All right, so my aggressor is coming towards me. I defend them, or I defend against them. I strike them, uh, putting them on the ground. I, I back away from them, mm -hmm. and then I strike my second opponent. All right, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's no issue integrating a staff into that. It's just, do you have a staff? Does it work with the martial art? Okay, you now use your staff with the martial art. Yeah. 
Now, although it, it's some, um, although it's interesting that it do, it doesn't say what it doesn't say what kind what kind of staff. So it could it could be a bow. It could be a um Joe. I'm pretty sure somebody could integrate this to use um to to use Filipino stick fighting if they wanted to. That'd be interesting. Oh, well, who don't like that? Uh, or, that's, um, that's a lot, right? And te and technically speaking, a sansescone could counts as a staff, so that could be used as well. Oh, um, sansescone is a um, is the three section staff. Yeah. Uh, I I don't remember if I put an example of that in the core book or not. Um, I I know I did like your your standard uh like four to six foot long uh you know when you think of a a a uh, staff kind of staff um in the core book uh the martial arts series details an umbrella which can also be used for your joe um but i'm not sure i have a three section staff example and, and the reason why i bring this up is because uh like the bow staff itself is like equally uh offensive as it is defensive right because you can you can use the bow staff to block just as effectively as you can to strike. Yep. So, so next is next on the next on the list is the thousand claws in darkness, which it, which is um, a good time. from the bike from the Baekje, um kingdom in Korea, fourth century. Its tags are aggressive, close, and rapid. A style de developed to fight the Huarangs in the Silek Kingdom. It is a complete opposite of Huarang Do. It uses brutal punches and an array of moves that would stop even the most experienced warrior. Besides punches, it uses attacks with elbows and knees to better damage the enemy and weaken its, his ability to defend himself. Most of its attacks are very quick, and skilled users are, are able to unleash a barrage of powerful strikes that are able to kill almost everyone. Although it's used mainly in Korea, this style has been taught in other countries like Portugal, Austria, and Mexico. But for now, it remains a rather enigmatic and unknown style. The description actually reminds me a lot of Muay Thai. Um, uh, just because of the integration of um, elbows and knees, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you want to like close ranks quickly. Um, so... Here, um, definitively, we're definitely looking at heavy blows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're probably looking at a, another martial art that pairs um, uh, interrupting actions with heavy blows because it sounds like I want to just deliver hit after hit after hit. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to give you the opportunity to strike with me. Um, I, I might put a lunge in here because... Uh, it sounds like you're trying to get underneath someone's guard. So uh, maybe a movement talent uh, and a, a attack to set up combo uh, just to get me rolling uh, once I start laying in the damage. All right, that, ma that, makes se that makes sense. Is there anything anything else you can think of adding or is that or is that what you've got for that one? Um... <laughs> So, I, I can say that. Uh, um, so when I did the 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 Thai kickboxing style, um, I actually used a a style or a uh, a branch of, of uh, uh, Muay Thai um, called the uh, King's Discipline, I think, and. It's all about analyzing your foe uh, before you uh, before you begin your assault. Mm -hmm. um, and so for them, I added in a uh, especially for bypassing armor, right? So it, it's a, again, I, I analyze, then I close ranks, and then I I begin my assault. Um, and so while it's not in the description here, that might be something you could integrate. Um, but otherwise, it just based on what you're saying, it feels very straightforward. 
Uh, and and let, if you, if you think I missed something, like please feel free to call it out, and we we can discuss those points. I'll um I'll I'll take I'll take I'll take that under note if if that comes up. Um. <laughs> next is Native American wrestling. Um. Origin, North America, Creation Time Unknown, Revival Time, 1978. Tags are Close, Stationary, and Defensive. This style has been in existence for centuries am among Native Americans, but after a long decline, it was revived by a group of young enthusiasts calling themselves Thundercats. It is very different from Greco-Roman wrestling. It uses more holds and pins with a smattering of pushes and stationary defense techniques. The style itself is very dangerous because its practitioners aren't taught to fight in a soft way. After all, every move was designed and redesigned by the cats to stop the enemy and kill him. Its true masters can break necks with one move, and normal practitioners tend to choke the soul out of their enemies in a casual way. Adding to it, there is a complete racial taboo concerning the style. No non-native is permitted to learn its secrets. All right. So <clears throat> let's start with the, the statement of let's put in a grapple, mm. right? Uh, that's that's clearly high on our list. Um, and accordingly, let, let's put in some grappling combos, which are going to be like um, a a uh, a grapple followed by an attack. An active defense followed by a grapple, um, and then the it it sounds like they want to focus on lethality versus submission. Uh, did did uh, did that come through for you also? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the question is, uh, how does that work necessarily? Now, we've talked about Heavy Blow a lot, but I've mentioned Power Strike as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that Power Strike actually might be a better fit here because once you're grappling, you are you are putting someone in a vulnerable position uh, to get access to their vital areas. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and even if it's a... Um, uh, I, I think they mentioned snapping necks, and, and snapping a neck is more like a um, a heavy blow in a grapple. But I, I like the idea of I, I put you into some form of a pin, and I manipulate your body in a way that it, it simply is going to uh, ignore any defenses that you have and inflict uh, extreme harm, right? Uh, wrenching tendons or, or dislocating bones. Uh, over time, if I can continue to sustain my hold. Mm -hmm. um, does that does that feel uh, like what we're talking about? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, uh, and, and the reason why I I, I just I, I want to iterate the we're going with power strike because even though it's it's more difficult to get off, uh, it ignores that armor. So it, once I have you grappled, it doesn't matter how tough you are. I am going to take you down. So the next one, the next one that I have is Daga. Its origin is in Europe. Time, time unknown. Who hunts the assassins? Their own assassins. This motto is a cornerstone of the Daga style in school. It has always been dedicated to the extermination of assassins and other dangerous entities. Its precepts are simple. Get to the enemy and kill him. Its moves and techniques are also simple. Using boxing techniques borrowed from classic styles, kicking moves from Savate, and protection techniques created in an attempt to stop or dodge attacks. This reliance on foreign moves confuses onlookers who sometimes misidentify the style. Okay, so it's a counter assassin martial art. Uh, I I would say that if you have the ability to apply this martial art, the assassin's already failed. Uh, that that being that you have found the assassin before they've killed their target, um, <laughs> and can now fight them. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but let, let's, uh, let's run with what we have in the description here. Um, so we're definitely going to take acrobatics. We're definitely going to take movement, right? Um, and then we're going to take some of the stuff we took for that, that New York street fighting. Mm. We're taking stealth. We're taking subterfuge. Okay. So, uh, you want to be hidden so that the assassin can expose themselves. That's your stealth aspect. Um, you need to be able to uh, convince them that you're not a threat. So that's your subterfuge. I might also add in disguise as well, right? Uh, because it's not like uh, ninjas are actually walking around in black uniforms. You, you just don't know that they're there. Mm -hmm. um, there are five and ninjas then, standing behind me. Exactly. <laughs> uh there was a a character in Discworld who was like a trained as an assassin the only class he failed in was stealth cuz he didn't attend he said he was there every day <laughs> oh but I'm bummed yeah that's that sounds about right especially for um especially for discord exactly <laughs> um so um Played by the talented Charles Dance in uh, Going Postal, by the way. Uh, okay, sorry, the tangent there. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take... Uh, I know I need to close ranks, right? And so I might actually do a double move to attack combo, right? So I can really just, like, do an all-out sprint to get as far as I can uh, before delivering the attack. Um because I am a counter assassin and I do not know how lethal the other person is, this is probably paired with a sword, um, or some uh, or or uh, some bladed instrument to to do some puncturing. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, we can uh, here. I might go with heavy blow route. Because I actually have an assassin strike defined from ninjutsu, which is in the martial arts uh, series, which is um, uh, how did I I set that up? So here I'll tell you. That's a heavy blow to move, and and so you're actually doing like a reverse assassin strike, which is move, move, heavy blow. Right, I get to you before you hit them. And I, I hit you just as hard, right? Mm -hmm. And preferably you're doing it from stealth so that they never see you coming. Yes. Um, the uh, the other thing, uh, again, we want to take those uh, um, that critical skill for stealth. We want to fade out of the shadows after we strike. Mm -hmm. That way we can we can uh, you know hit the assassin again. Should they have the unfortunate uh, luck to have survived? Um, am I missing anything here? No, I think I think that I think that covers it. And oh, you know, what? Uh, let me let me actually. Uh, I'll take this. I might also take a specialty in interrupting actions, right? Um, because again, I'm a counter assassin. Mm -hmm. So let's say that I don't catch them in time before they engage their target, but I have the the ability to stop them before the blow lands, that might be really good to have. So they're, they're in the process of doing their assassination thing. I actually get in uh, with my move-move attack combo, and I'm specialized in interrupting action, so this is actually a perfect time for me to hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. So... There's there's my my last minute edition. All right. So next is Omi. Um, whose origin is Caucasus, the kingdom of Georgia, between twelve o five and twelve thirty. Style tags are close, fluid, and aggressive. A fighting style developed by mercenaries in the medieval period. It became limited to the territory of the of the Georgian kingdom. 
It uses many fist and grappling techniques like joint locks. Other notable deviations from classic fighting styles were concentrating on damage and a lack of an organized structure. Now it is used mainly as a sport in the Caucasus region. Because of this style is it, because of this the style is slowly losing its edge and will soon degenerate into a non-combat style. But there are still many practitioners who use the old style and are willing to teach it to others. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go grappling again. Clearly we have to specialize in grappling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm thinking that stagger is the, the other maneuver that we want to focus on because it actually calls out joint locks and it calls out that it's becoming more of a sport than an actual like uh, combat martial art. And I think stagger, when you apply it with a grapple, fits that um, pain compliance uh, tap out mentality that we want, mm -hmm. right? Like, we might not be doing long-term damage, but we're going to keep you from acting. We're going to keep you in a subdued position. And if you try and do anything, it is taxing on your body, um, even though I'm not doing a ton of damage. Um, and and here our, our combos are... Um, now you said it was uh it was the opposite of mobile, right? It's it's a stationary, right? Um let's see it it actually doesn't it actually doesn't say it being um sta being stationary. Oh what were the tags again? Um close, fluid, and aggressive. Oh fluid, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I, I thought I heard stationary, but fluid was what it is. So I I'm probably almost as surely gonna add in a counter grapple, right? So uh, active defense to grapple uh, and active defense to grapple to stagger, right? Um, depending on, on how difficult the, the foe might seem, uh, I'll start with just grappling them. Um, but I definitely want to be able to defend, and that's, that's that fluidity aspect of it, right? I want to be just as good as attacking as I am defending it. So. So, so next is um, one that I know that I'm going to screw up because it's dealing with Turkish. Yeni Asri Jig Jop. And I'm pretty sure I fucked that up. Um, its origin is 16th century Turkey. The tags are mobile, aggressive, and rapid. Created by the Janissary Corps, the style uses many kicks and sweeps inspired by the movements of the Sufi mystics. The style itself is an accidental development of the religious beliefs of the Janissaries. After a period of inactivity, it resurfaced and became popular among the Turkish military. Movement during combat is circular, and many attacks start with the warrior spinning around to gain momentum needed to deliver powerful blows and kicks. Additionally, the spread arms typical to whirling mystics has been adapted to use in taking down enemies during a spin. An interesting fact of this style lies in its hidden nature. A practitioner is initially easily mistaken for a dervish and ignored by other combatants. Okay. So, um, this is fun. We're going to take movement. We're going to take disguise. Uh, we're going to take subterfuge. Not that we're all about sneak attacks, but we're all about people not realizing that we're actually a threat. Um, so it's not that I'm, I'm actually hiding in combat. Uh, like you can't perceive where I'm at. It's, you don't perceive me as a threat and that's why it's going to hurt really bad when I engage you. Okay. Um, we're going to take some movement. We're going to do some movement combos. Um, the, uh, uh I think with the way they're moving, uh, I might do something like uh, uh, move to a trip combo because I want to take them down. I want to I want to put them on the ground because I'm always twirling, right? So that that seems to lend itself to like these sweeping strikes. Um, and then so that that gives me like a move to trip or a, a move to trip to attack, possibly moving again. 
as I just kind of twizzle my way through the battlefield. Um, and the uh, the key here is uh, I'm really going to catch somebody off guard the first time. Um, uh, the second time might be more difficult. But again, we're, we're doing these sweeping attacks. So I might also want to take especially in setting up or the setup maneuver so that once I'm exposed as being a, a valid combatant, I'm still hitting you in ways that it's hard to predict, and I'm I'm actually maneuvering you so that I can deliver more attacks or uh, uh, more effective attacks. And I'd say I'd say I'd say that'll I'd say that'll certainly work. Um, next one. Once again, I'm gonna fuck up pronunciation, especially given the, especially given the region. Um, Der Kampfweg, origin Central Europe, 19th century. Um, the tags are neutral, stationary, and close. A brawling style developed in Central Europe after the Napoleonic Wars uses direct moves coming from the univer coming from university brawlers and fraternities. This style is the gentleman's answer to boxing the latter a barbaric sport in the eyes of German students. The basics of the style are simple. The combatants stay immobile during the fight and barrage the enemy with well-aimed punches. Foot techniques are completely forbidden and seen as a coward's tactic. The aim of combat is not to disable the enemy, but to learn your own limits. So the practitioners rarely suffer from heavy internal damage. Bruises and blue spots are normal. Although a sport style has its number, has its number of dangerous and deadly moves used by the strongest and most skilled students. Also, in also interesting is the fact that many university professors are quite skilled in this style, making them very unlikely and deadly opponents. Well, I, I thought they didn't. Wait, hold on. So they they seem to be more focused on pain compliance because they're not breaking bones. They're 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 leaving bumps and bruises. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not necessarily lethal. But then uh, at the end, we're describing the the professors or, or the the administrators as being deadly combatants. I'd say I'd I'd say I'd say some of that was ty was typos because I'm re I'm reading the um, entry mostly verbatim. Um, I'd say when it comes to this one, the I, the idea the idea is that nobody expects the professor to be good, to be good at this kind of boxing. Okay. Um. Yeah. So so uh, we're we're gonna go back to our other boxing example, uh, which I think was called Irish boxing. Yeah. Uh. Uh, and we're gonna start with a statement of, we're gonna take some extra stamina, right? Uh, because clearly you need to know how to take a hit with this, um, boxing by attrition style. It seems. Um, I think because this is a, a drawn out and it seems more of a showman kind of style, uh, the maneuvers I focus on are, are set up and stagger, right? Uh, set up because I, I want to make sure that I'm able to hit my foe, stagger because um, it is about me hitting them repeatedly. Uh, and effectively, not necessarily about doing damage, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I will wear them down over time with uh, strikes that aren't necessarily as harmful, but prevent them from really hitting me. Um, because we talk about this kind of like uh, what is honorable versus what is dishonorable, um. I don't know how I feel about interrupting actions for this style. Like usually when we talk about boxing uh, or, or a, a, a hyper aggressive style, that's something that you want in there. Um, but I feel like the way these guys are described, I'm just going to double down on the extra stamina because uh, I, I want to win by, by my skill, not by making you look bad. Mm -hmm. um, 
if that's a distinction that makes sense. All right. Um, now, uh, I, I will say that, again, uh, you can reference uh, Bart Jitsu, uh, because it talks a lot about, like, what is honorable or dishonorable in a, in a fight because it's an English martial art. Uh, but uh, we also have a, uh, a boxing style which I, I forget which style I went with. Uh, it might have been uh, an outfighter uh, or swarmer, um, but that, that might give you a... a uh, like, I think there's a history of boxing in there, mm -hmm. and I think boxing actually evolved as a, as a more refined or more civilized form of fighting than just, like, brawling in the streets. So there's an interesting, like, elitism to this martial art, uh, at least in my mind. There, de there, de there definitely is, and I um, when I was reading through this one, I I envisioned the, the um, the the fist the fisticuffs the fisticuffs knuckles forward kind kind of stan kind of stereotypical stance that you see the, old, that you see the old timey gentlemen have with the handlebar mustache and all. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, I remember reading something about them. The reason why they had that like that that tall stance. Where they're not necessarily guarding their face, they're guarding their bodies, uh, was because uh, these people had day jobs and it was typically like uh, very physical jobs. Mm -hmm. So they get punched in the face all day long, but they still had to be fit enough to like lift heavy things the next day. Um, there's your weird bit of trivia that I'm not even sure is accurate, but uh, I, I, I do remember seeing that somewhere. So the um, next one that I have is Tariq al Harb, origin Al Andalus, um, 9th century Iberian Pen Peninsula. The tags are fluid, offensive, and precise. The style has been in existence for almost 1300 years. Created as a self defense after being dismounted and disarmed, it incorporates armor use into its techniques. Other moves rely on being prepared and aware of the enemy's movements, which allows the practitioner to strike weak points and maximize damage. Practiced first by the male armored nobles from the Moorish Caliphate, it spread along the Muslim forests. Um, long forgotten, it was revived in the 20th century among the bikers of Europe, who replaced male armor with flak vests and other military surplus. All right. This was kind of fun. Um, I, uh, I I like the uh, the cut of this martial arts jib. Um, excuse me, sir. Um, here's what I'm thinking. We are we're definitely going to start it off as defensive in nature, right? Again, we're going to pick up offense. That's fine. Um, we're going to focus like uh, the fact that we integrated armor. Okay, tells me that. Um, Active defenses are a part of this. Uh, and then we talk about precision strikes. Mm -hmm. So what I'm picturing here, uh, there's not a lot of movement involved because this is like you are dismounted and disarmed, I believe was a part of the description of things that have to happen before I use this. Right? So there's not a lot of uh, engaging the target. Uh, the target has engaged me, and now I'm relying on the last tools I hand, which are my hands. Right? Um, so what I'm picturing here is like an active defense to set up combo. Um, and then because we're not talking about nerve strikes, but we are talking about precision, I, I might, uh, so I, I don't know if we need heavy blow here. Like we might really just focus in on these uh, um, uh, using setup in every way possible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an active defense to setup um, and then an attack to setup, right? And and those are kind of your, your, your two combos to go to, right? They come at me, I defend, I counter. I've now prepared myself for a very accurate strike. I deliver, I deliver another strike that sets me up for my next attack. Um, 
And I, I think that's a lot of fun. Um, what I might do is uh, I'm going to build the armor as gear, and I might give the gear painful, right? But only against unarmored attacks or unarmed attacks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I'm using metal and I'm making you punch metal. Um, and like I have actually trained in ways to make you, you know, break your own fist because of I, you know, I, I pivot or I, I manipulate my body when you're coming at me. So th those are, I think that's how I would address that. Oh, uh, one other quick note. So I, I mentioned the two combos, and the reason why uh, they're both two-move combos is because the more moves you add in, the less accurate it becomes. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, this is where, again, we're focusing on precision. So we're not doing a lot of flashy stuff here. It's, it's uh, I got my bread and butter, and I'm going to uh, uh, enjoy that. So... The next one, the next one that I, the next one, the final one that I have in the list is Mountain Wind. Um, origin is the Himalaya Mountains and the Tibetan Plateau. Time unknown. The style tags are aggressive, mobile, and fluid. The Mountain Wind style is a very distant relative to Dagan Ka. Its basic ideas concentrate on movement and its offensive capabilities. It uses many unorthodox techniques like running and rolling with attacks while being perf being performed while moving near the enemy. Its practitioners usually stay on the move and try to attack their enemies while running past them. This also allows them to dodge most attacks. Okay. So definitely make sure we pick up the talents, acrobatics, and movement, right? Uh, we're in the mountains, so let's also add climbing, right? Mm -hmm. um, climbing, by the way, offers a uh, defensive option that I didn't mention earlier. Um, so if you have climbing and you are near something that can be, uh, that you can climb, you can actually apply your climbing as a defense because you leverage your climbing skill to get out of the way. Um, so th this also goes to the the uh, the capoeira uh, variant that you mentioned earlier. That's a another trick that they have, but this would apply here as well. Uh, so we are we are definitely looking at um, some some move and attack combos. Uh, it sounds like, uh, did I hear that they, they are like strike and break away or they are close ranks and engage because the, the aggressive tag, um, uh, makes me think that they strike, uh, repeatedly, whereas, uh, they, they talk a lot about mobility here. I would say, and then, I would, um, I would say that they, pr that they probably emphasize a lot of hit and running. Yeah. So I, I might do two combos. One's like move, attack, move. And the other one would be uh, move, attack, attack. Mm -hmm. um, just depending on what I want to do uh, for that given situation. Um, the... Uh... Depending on how aggressive we want to get, we can we can go to heavy blows here. Um, but I, 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 uh, I, I didn't really hear a lot of, like, uh, hyper, um, hyper violent kind of descriptions. Um, but that, that's something you, you could do if you wanted to, um, I, uh, for fun, what I want to do is I want to take an ally, which is a, a boon, and, and have a pet condor. <laughs> That's what I want uh, for this martial artist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know it's not in the description at all, but I, uh, I just picture like Himalayan mountains. I, I want a condor. Um, 
So forgive me there. Um, oh, given, but that given, the, though, given that one of my given that one of my campaigns involved it involved a knight who was riding on a who was riding on a giant dire wolf, I can't really pass judgment. Well, I, I'm certainly picturing, um, you know, you you calling this uh, this this beast to come and like swoop in. Um, do you remember the game Samurai Showdown? Yeah. <laughs> there was a there was a guy who had a, a pet dog, mm -hmm. and I, I if if this was a fighting game, that's how I'm picturing this wolf, act, or how I'm picturing the the condor acting. All right, he he's my stand-in for all those special moves. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I, uh, I, I would take um, specialties for coordinating attack with my 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 pet condor, uh, which I again I, I know that's not part of the description at all, but this is me having some fun. Well, it's it's what we're here it's what we're here for, isn't it? Um, well, that that and the drinking and shit posting. I, I suppose that is also true. Mm -hmm. But th I do want to thank you for um, for humoring this little experiment. I figured it would be a good way to showcase the um, versatility of the martial arts system that you have. Yeah, I uh, uh, so so um, uh, I I do. If you want to take a deeper dive into martial arts, I, I highly take uh, recommend you taking a look at the martial arts series. Uh, uh, dear listener, um, where we, we explore multiple real world martial arts, um, whenever possible, I, I have them paired with, uh, videos. Um, and, uh, I try to give like a little bit of a history lesson with each of them. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> I know we were, we were shooting for the hip, so I hope these don't feel very samey. Um, but we covered how many martial arts here? Let me see. Let me see here. Let me let me load the document. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Uh, so, so forgive me if some of those felt a little repetitive. Um, I, I was trying to do the, the best I could. Uh, if you read the articles, um, uh, we'll also give uh, like recommended uh, talent pairings and additional boons at fit a martial art. Um, so we, we definitely get into to more detail than kind of the, the high level descriptions that try and just get to the core of, of the, the style that we're being described today. Um, did, did you have any thoughts about the, how these kind of came out? I think at, I think at the end, I think at the end of the day, this is, this is a, um, this is emblematic of, of the fact that as I, I had half jokingly tweeted earlier today, normalize martial arts systems and TRPGs, but that's large, that's largely because of the fact that a lot of people a lot of people a lot of people underestimate how the choice of the choice of a character's fighting style can be can have just as much role playing potential as as their as their powers or sk or skills or what or what not and it's yeah. one of those things that i find is very undervalued and uh i i would definitely agree there uh so like not every character has to have a fighting style but a fighting style can add a lot of diversity uh to to the feeling of a character uh if i can go back to um uh i feel bad calling it irish boxing Let, let's call it barroom boxing okay right. uh I, I just called it irish boxing because that was the name in the th in the document i i totally get that right i just i i feel bad that it, it just uh it it's like it's barroom brawl like okay we get that um the uh you you can you can diversify further than things i was saying and the reason why i want to jump back to this was like you could take a specialty for if your stamina drops below zero 
right? You can take a specialty for um, any kind of condition you might find, right? So I can have a specialty for fighting in a bar. I can have a specialty for having less than zero stamina. I can have a specialty for improvised weapons, right? Mm -hmm. And all of those are good independently, but if I'm in a bar, I've been beaten up, and I've picked up a beer bottle, look out. All right? Um, and and that, that is something that you can do with all of these different styles. Um, you know, uh, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the last one. I want to pair with a condor just because it's up in the mountains. Um, <clears throat> but uh, for, for the, I think it was like a Hungarian style that was all about quick moving. It was like a, a thousand teeth in the dark, I think it was called, something along those lines. Um, and again, forgive me because we were going like really rapid fire here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I might want to pair that with horsemanship instead and, and take it with, uh, you know, a specialty for if I'm mounted on an animal. Because um, uh, you mentioned the dire wolf made me think of that. Um, and, and there's there's nothing stopping you, especially if you uh, if you think of like let's say uh, taekwondo, right? Uh, is it unreasonable to take a specialty for attacking mounted foes? Mm -hmm. Right. No. Like these these are all things that you can do that we we didn't necessarily get into because I was just trying to work off of the the core descriptions, but maybe very valid. Uh, uh, options for you and things that you can do to make a style feel more unique. I can, I can certainly get behind that. Um, but with with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for being willing to being willing to come back into the into the temple. And of course, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Support this. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present... My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>